Hello there. Today we're going to tie this. This is a small stonefly nymph. It's fairly realistic. It's not, but it's not that difficult to make. It does not require that many materials. So basically, let's just uh, get started. First of all, um, I'm going to tie this using one of these uh, new Arex uh, uh, bent streamer hooks. They are very, very cool, and they're barbless. That's something that I also think is, is very, very cool. Um, and for this fly we need a, a, quite a lot of, uh, of goose biots. Uh, for, for this color scheme it's going to be a dark brown one. And basically uh, the first thing we need to do is to, to tie down with the tying thread here to get uh, a bit into the hook bend. Um, as I said, we're going to need quite a lot of these goose biots. These are going to be our uh, both our uh, legs and our tail. And also we're going to use uh, a pair of these to to uh, to give the body some uh, some striations and some colorations. So I'm going to need 10 of these. I've just cut out a, a few here. So I have some uh, some ready here on the table. And uh, the first thing we need to do is tie two in on each side, so that these are gonna be uh, these are gonna be the tail part. So first, I'm gonna tie one on one on my side, and then one on the other side. Only one. This is a very very cool material that has many many uses. So so if you haven't got any of these. Then I would and and you're tying nymphs and stuff like that. I would urge you to get some in in some different colors because they are really really a cool material that has a lot of different applications and and for nymphs these just look awesome. So basically, I've tied two here that is in a V shape now, and then I'm gonna take two others and I'm gonna tie them reverse from the first ones. So I'm gonna tie these on again on the sides. But this time in the tip of the feather, like that. So I have one, I have two that is pointing backwards, and these are gonna be bent over uh, the the body of, of the fly here. Like that. I'm just gonna check to see if my tail is, is still even and straight. Not completely, but these are you can easily manipulate these into into being in the right position, like so. Okay, the next thing we need is, is something for uh, a rib. And, and for this I'm going to use uh, some very, very thin uh, monofilament. Just like this. And basically I'm just going to fasten it here. Like that. Then we need some. Um, then we need some tan vinyl rib, uh, and uh, and for this because this is a fairly large hook. This is a size eight. You could use a, a smaller one, but uh, you could use a smaller hook. And uh, and I urge you to uh, to if you if you like this pattern to tie it in smaller sizes if you like. But but this is the one that is easy most easy for me to to illustrate and to. To demonstrate this vinyl uh, vinyl rib here has uh, two sides. It has a flat side and then it has a rounded side. And we want the rounded one to be on top, and that means we have to tie down the um, the the flat side. So the flat side is facing upwards. Like this. Then I'm gonna move my tying thread all the way up here. Tying fairly evenly on top of the material here, so so I get everything covered because uh, this is fairly see-through. So we need to cover the material in basically kind of the same amount of of tying thread. It's not crucial, but um, but it will give a more good-looking fly. And basically, I tie this quite a long ways up here. Most of this uh, last part here is going to be covered with dubbing, so so you don't have to be that careful about this last part. And not before I'm up here, I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to take my tying thread and go all the way back here. Apply some pressure, and just to even things out and make sure that the 
everything looks nice and well, like so. Then I'm gonna turn my vinyl rib, and uh, and I take great care, and then I pull quite a lot more on the vinyl rib in the beginning to kind of uh, kind of make it make it stretch out a bit, and uh, so it, so it, it's easier to taper this. So it's gonna have a it's gonna be a bit thinner in the beginning than in the end. Then about. I would say three fifths, something like that, up the up the hook shank. I tie down my vinyl rib and cut it off. Like that. As my tail shifted a bit, I can just adjust like that. Just adjust it. Just adjust it. Then I'm gonna take these two uh, longer uh, pieces of uh, of uh, goose bites and tie them down so they are kind of on the sides but also a bit on top uh, and and just fasten them with the tying thread this will give your fly a nice two-toned colored body that looks absolutely awesome and it's a nice way of doing uh, doing uh, uh, an, a really nice looking uh, really nice looking nymph you see like that up there and I'm gonna take my rib and I'm gonna turn my rib in the uh, grooves between the turns of um, of uh, vinyl rib in order to fasten the goose bites. So they are really, really clamping down, and also you have the segmented uh, look to the fly as well, like that. This is actually a fly I just saw online on a picture. So uh, this is. Uh, my guess on how you tie that fly. I haven't seen uh, anything other than just the picture, so I just had to to try this out, to this technique out to see how it looks. And I must say, I'm pretty certain that this is the way it's done. At least this is one way to do it. <laughs> okay. Then we need two more goose bites. One for each side, and uh, side, and this is going to be the legs. So you want to tie these in so the the natural curve of the feather is uh, is away from the body. We're going to give these some uh, some twists and turns and bends also later on to to make it look even more like legs. And of course, these has to be even length, even in length. Those these first ones. So you see, they're on the sides now, they're fairly even in length. And then we're going to tie down what we're going to use for thorax. And uh, I used uh, olive for this. Maybe I should have used brown. Let me just see. No, the olive is okay. Now I think actually the brown will look better. So like so. Then I'm going to take a fess and tail feather here. Take out some of these, and the pheasant tail feathers are also one of the things that I use the most for for nymphs and stuff like that. Uh, fairly inexpensive, really, really cool, cool uh, stuff. Um, so I take this and I tie it down so the top side is pointing downwards. That will give me the right um, the right color scheme on top. Tying, making sure I'm completely down where the vinyl rip uh, uh, ended, like so. I'm gonna cut off all of this. We don't need any of that. And then I'm gonna take some uh, some squirrel dubbing in beige, kind of like a a neutral tannish grayish color here. And uh, the, the thing about this is you need to apply a very small amount at a time. So I apply this uh, because the, the, the less you use, the easier it is to manipulate and to, to get completely uh, completely in the, in the right place. And then about a couple of millimeters further along, I'm going to tie in the second uh, leg. The second legs and these are also going to be as you can see i'm going to tie these in 
uh, the dubbing and they have to have the same length as the first pairs so these um, will of course be a bit shorter when you look at them from above but I have the dubbing there already in order to uh, to have something for this to latch on to and when you're tying these it's important that you really apply some pressure because we're going to manipulate those legs quite a lot further on and on the other side and as you see I'm just gonna pull this away so you can see I have the four legs here two on each side and my thorax is still there I'm gonna cut off that and that also then a bit more dubbing just a small 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 amount of dubbing to cover my tracks like so and then I move my tying for a bit further up here and there I'm gonna tie in the last legs and again tie them in exactly as you did the other ones the same length and everything And this is the trickiest part, these legs here. You can basically pull them into place. You see? And these has to stick a bit further out. Cutting off the front part of this. And I know they are sticking not completely the same way, all of these and stuff like that, but that's okay. Then I'm going to attach some eyes to this fly. And for this I'm going to use some bead chain in black. This was also will also add some weight to the fly, which is a nice thing to have on, on any nymph. I dropped those into my shoe just gonna cut out another one I dropped those as well but I found them again there you have the eyes And now one of my legs fell off. That was not intended. I'm going to reattach it, of course, in a second. Just going to fasten the eyes here. You can even use some, uh, some super glue, some varnish to, to attach the eyes like that. I'm going to move my tying thread back and attach my... Uh, my adventurous leg here the one that tried to get away I'm gonna turn some tank third behind the front uh, the front uh, leg so it's gonna be sticking out a bit more as you can see there, then I apply a bit more dubbing, just a small amount, just to cover the tying thread. Make sure that your leg sticks out into, uh, it comes out at a, at a 90 degree angle. Like so. 
you can also tie a bit of dubbing in front of uh, the eye then I'm gonna make a small cross turn across the eyes here see like this whoops Then I'm gonna take the uh, the uh, uh, pheasant tail, turn it all over as as the thorax, apply some pressure like that. Then I'm gonna kind of kind of twist this because that will enable me to get very close to my scissor and to cut all of these off at one go. There you go. Making what my whip finish. And of course I'm gonna apply some varies to this later on. And what we do now is is in order this will fish nicely as it is now uh, with the legs here but we want this to be a good looking fly as well. So what I do is is I basically I bend the legs and I break them so they will stick out in the way I want them to. So I bend them with my fingers and then I mash down on there to kind of break them. Not break them but 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 make them make them bend and make them stay in that position. And I do that to the front part of the legs I, I twist them so they so they point forward and to the to the legs that's pointing backwards, the two other legs, I do it the opposite direction. This will give the legs a nice natural look and make this look a lot more like an actual insect. You can see it's done there on one side and then I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. It's just a nice effect this to, to, to bend these back. And then the last one And of course, optimally, you do this so you have the bends exactly the same place on both sides. I messed that a bit up, but that's okay. You can even take a pair of pliers and 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 break and bend them with. There you have it. The legs are sticking forward uh, as you as you want them to. You have the eye there, uh, looking good, adding a bit of weight. And then of course, I'll pull out some of the dubbing here on the, on the underside here to make sure it has a bit of a shaky ragged feel, ragged look here underneath and there you have it a small nymph <laughs> Maybe my legs is a bit long here in the front, the front part of the, the front legs. Maybe they're a bit on the longish side. They should probably have been a bit shorter, but yeah, you know, that's okay. It's gonna fish nice anyway. So, there you go. A small nymph. <laughs>